In this video we will learn how to draw a neuron in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to go over here to the ellipse tool and we're going to go up to the uh, swatches and click on the brown. If you don't see this um, this control menu then go up to windows click on the control toolbar. Okay, So uh, we're going to draw the circle by and this so this is going to be the soma. So I'm going to hold the shift key so that it stays a circle click and hold just create the uh, cell about the size that you want and then now we're gonna draw the actual processes so I'm gonna go over to the uh, pencil tool and if you don't if you might see something that looks like this just click and hold and go down to pencil now we want to draw the axon so uh, to draw the axon we want to hold the shift key and that's gonna draw straight lines we're going to start about in the center and draw it down, and then about like that. And then let's change the color to the same color as the Soma. We're going to change the line thickness to really thick. I have about 10 points here. Let's do, let's do 12 points. Go to um, Appearance, Stroke, and then do a round cap and a round joint. Actually, I'm going to... Uh, correct this end because I want it to come straight down and then I also want to have like a little branch. So I'm going to move over to the pencil tool and if you have it selected if you just draw starting from that line it'll edit that line and it'll attach it. Now you, I can also edit this line and make it more curved if I want it. It's a nice little feature. Now um, I, I, I want to check to make sure the smoothness is right so I'm going to click I'm going to type enter the keyboard and I want the smoothness to be about right here so this if it's all the way to the left it's going to draw really jagged lines because it's matching your every mouse movement if you go over here to the smooth it's going to really try to curve those lines and make it as smooth as possible so it won't be exactly what you drew it just approximates what you drew I want a, a quite a bit of smoothing um, so I'm going to click OK now I want to make sure that I click the selection tool and then click the pencil tool because this has a nice little feature. Well, the nice little feature is that if I try to draw a line now, see what it did? It corrected the line that I previously drew. Now, sometimes I might want that, but other times I might not want that. I might want to just draw a branch. So that's why I click the selection tool and then click the pencil tool because then I can click the control key I click and hold the control key, I, my cursor, my tool changed to the previous tool that I was using. So now I'm in pencil mode before I'm in uh, selection mode. So now I can just click on the screen and I no longer have that, that pencil stroke drawn. So now I can kind of draw another branch. You can also do the same thing by just drawing the branches on the branch that that you um, you were not previously drawn on. So I might draw on this branch and then I'll draw on this branch or I can click the control key and then click away and then so I can modify that. I don't want that many branches on my neuron. Okay, so we can draw a branch here. And I don't like that end, so I'm gonna correct it. I don't know, just draw however you like. You want them to be a little jagged, you know, give them some. Uh, so now you can, now I don't like how that curves, so I can use the control key to click back on this arrow and correct it. So it's really, once you understand how to use that, it's uh, pretty, pretty handy. Now when I'm drawing these branches, I'm curving out like this, so it kind of looks like a tree. You know, if you go kind of like that, it's it's okay, um, and it actually does that in, in, in actual neurons, but it just to you, it doesn't look very organic. I'll just draw that again. So some of this is taking kind of artistic liberties to to draw what you think a neuron looks like as opposed to maybe what it exactly looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to now kind of do some minor corrections, 
you know, just to, you know, this little, where they don't quite meet up. And you're not going to be able to join these lines, unfortunately, because in Adobe Illustrator, a path can only, a path can only be a, a straight line. It can't have branches on it, so, which might be intuitive, but just want to mention that. Okay, we're just kind of correcting these. Just make sure everything meets up like it's supposed to. Looks pretty good. All right, now what I always encourage is to kind of copy this over here. Just in case I make any mess ups here, I can go back to the original, or if I decide, oh, I really wanted this one particular part, um, then I can always go back. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to join all of these. Right now they're lines and a circle. I want them to be all a fill, like this circle. So I'm going to go over to um, Pathfinder. Oh, and I didn't mention, if you don't see this appearance over on the right, go up to Windows, then go down and click Appearance. And uh, for the Pathfinder, click the Pathfinder. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to join all of these um, components. Again, if you don't see the Pathfinder, go up to Window, go down to Pathfinder. And then we're going to click on this Merge. First, before we do that, um, so that's what happens whenever you don't do it, right? Um, it disappears everything. We need to first expand these lines. So we're going to go up to Object, Expand. And then we're gonna, we want to say Fill and Stroke, so click OK. And so now you see that this, these lines are not lines anymore. They're actually um, elongated rectangles, if you like to think about it, or elongated um, curved rectangles. Um, so now we're going to go back to Path, and then we're going to go to Merge. Okay, so now it, it merges those points. Now it's a single shape. As before, it was a whole bunch of shapes. Now it's a single shape. Okay. Next thing we want to do is, uh, so this is fine. I mean, it, if you if you want it to look like this, it looks, I think that'd be great. You know, you can give a little outline for a little definition. And that looks like a really good neuron. You can even add a drop shadow, go up to effect, go down to style and add a drop shadow. You can increase the kind of the, the blur and then maybe the offset you know, moves where that um, that shade is. You know, even give a really good 3D appearance. Click OK. And, you know, that looks great. That looks like a beautiful neuron. Um, if you want to go a little further, you want it to have like a little more of a 3D effect, then let's uh, remove the outline. And then we'll remove the drop shadow by going over to Appearance. Then we're going to click on the drop shadow, click trash. So we just deleted that drop shadow. And then now what we want to do is we want to make these kind of look like tubes. Um, so we want to, uh, to do that. We're going to go up to object. Then we're going to go to path. We're going to offset path. Now yours is probably default. We're going to do like 10, something like that. And it's going to look like this. And it's going to look really ugly. But that's not what we want to do. We want to... If you do 10, it's going to take that path and it's going to extend it and make it larger along the whole object. So it even it even calculates where it needs to be um, to do that. So it's really cool. Um, you can go beyond or you can go actually make it smaller. So you do minus 4 pixels. And so now the larger object, the original object is right here and the smaller object is in the center. So that's what we want. And it's going to keep both of the original drawn object and the new path. So you're going to click OK. So now you're, you've selected on that smaller object. We're going to make it a lighter color um, than this brown. I, this, so to do that, I would use the color guide over here. And if you want to access that, you can go, go up to Window and go down to Color Guide. And it'll pop up. And then I'm going to select a lighter hue. Okay, right now we're editing the outline of the shape. We don't want to do that, so we're going to go to Swatch and Swatches, which again is in the window, and you go down to Swatch. And we're going to change this to No Outline. And we're going to click on this 
fill, and you see you want that square to be overlaying the outline. That's what we want to edit. So now we're going to go down to Color Guide. We're going to click this lighter hue. I highly recommend this color guide. It's very useful. So now we're going to add a blur to this to kind of give that little 3D effect. And we're going to go to Effect, Blur, and a Gaussian Blur. And two looks pretty good. OK. And so this, this is a very quick way to create very three-dimensional looking objects because what you really want is you want it to kind of merge along here. Okay, So that looks pretty good. Now I don't really like that Soma. It doesn't look very uh, roundish. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original. This is why one of the reasons why I had it uh, copied and we're going to copy over this Soma. Bring it over and we're going to line it up. We're going to do a gradient fill. Again, that's in, if you want to find that, that's up in the windows and go down to gradient. We're going to click the radial fill. And I already kind of have a preset because I did this before, but um, you double click on this and you click on the brown that you want. Then you double click on this circle and you uh, go, can go up to the color guide. And well, let's see. I will click on this and then click on the eyedropper tool and go to color guide and you can change see how it's getting lighter now originally what you would have is let's go to the gradient click on so you're going to click on brown okay so now it looks the same color but we're going to change that so I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool go up to color guide and you know, just do one of these colors here or maybe, no, I like this color. Okay. Click on the direct select, select, click on the selection tool to kind of get out of that command. So it's starting to look a little better, but I kind of want these to kind of come in like they're joining up with the cell body. The way I do that is I'm going to click on the object, go over to eraser tool, and then I want to change the size of this eraser tool so that it's a about the same size as the width of this um, this this tube. Now I'm just going to click. I want this to be a little, a little larger. Just joining up with it. And you can get it exactly the way you want for, um, whenever the more you work with it. And there you go. So that looks like a neuron that um, you can add all sorts of things to this. Um, you know, some words and some proteins and uh, maybe some other neurons aside, do some synaptic connections. But that's how you do in a, a neuron in Adobe Illustrator. Oh, just one last thing. You can always modify the colors by selecting the object, go up to Color Guide, Click on this edit or apply colors, Click reset, edit, and then now you can change the color of the neuron. So if you want a purple or blue or cyan, um, then you can do something like that. And let's cancel so we go down to the, red, the original brown. So that is how you do a neuron in Adobe Illustrator.